Hi, welcome to Math Movies with Ms. Feuerbeck and Ms. Faludi. Today we will be dividing whole numbers by decimals. When we divide whole numbers by decimals, we're going to use estimation and reasoning about place value and division. Let's look at a word problem here. If Jenny ran three-tenths of a mile a day and she ran 15 miles in all, how many days did she run? So here we have an equation, and the equation matches the story problem. So what we're looking at here is that 15 is the total number of miles that Jenny ran, and we're dividing that by 0.3, which is how many miles she ran a day. Now, we're trying to figure out the blank, which is the total number of days that she ran. So whenever I do division problems using decimals, I always like to turn it into a missing factor problem. So I'm going to just slide this over and I'm going to make um, the same equation, but it's going to be using multiplication. So it'll be the blank times 0.3 equals 15. Now I do that because sometimes it helps me to think about multiplication. Sometimes that's easier to think about than division. So let's do some reasoning about this problem. Let's try to figure out how many days she ran. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine or pretend that instead of running 0.3 miles a day, I'm going to imagine that she ran three whole miles a day. So that's an easier number for me to work with. If Jenny ran three miles a day, well, I know that 15 divided by 3 is 5. So I'm going to write that down here. This is a different problem, but it might help us. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So if she were to have run three miles a day, she would be running for only five days. Now, I know that 0.3 is actually a lot smaller than three whole miles. It's not even one half, 0.3. So if she's running in shorter increments or shorter distances each time, I know it's going to take her more time to run the total 15 miles. And that's because she's not running as much each day, so it's going to take longer. So I have a feeling that my answer is definitely going to be more than five. It's going to take her more than five days to run that same total distance. Now, the strategy that we're going to use to find the exact answer is that when we divide decimals, we're going to think of the numbers like whole numbers instead of decimals. And then we're going to reason to determine the size of the answer. So I know that when I ignore the decimal here, I think of this number as instead of 0.3, it's 3. So when I think about 15 divided by 3, I get 5. So my choices here, if I was to think about what are my answers possibilities, I could say, well, it could be 5, it could be 50, it could be 500, and I'm using the powers of 10 here to come up with my answers. All right, so now I need to think about this. It might help me to visualize thinking about a number line. So what I've done here is I've created a, um, a number line that we're going to use to help determine the answer. So I'm going to just try to get rid of this. All right, I'm going to move it for now. I don't know why it's doing that. All right, so here's our number line. And let's say that I wanted to show um, 0.3 miles. So I might start at 0, imagining that my number line is going all the way to 15. That's how many miles she ran in total. Let's say I start at 0, and I do 0.3 miles. All right, that's one jump. I'm going to do another jump of 0.3. And that's going to land me at 0.6. All right, let's keep going. Another jump. Now I'm at 0.9, which is not even one whole mile. And I could keep going and going and going. But let's just stop there for a moment. And let's think to ourselves, all right, if we have jumped one, two, three jumps, and we've gotten to 0.9, that actually might help us here to do some reasoning. If I know that it took three jumps to get to approximately one whole mile, that means that 
she spent three days running and she hadn't even reached one whole mile yet. Now, we're trying to get to 15 miles. So if I take these three groups that we just came up with and I multiply three times 15, well, that's gonna help me because I'm gonna get to the total number of miles. I know three times 15 is 45. So my answer should be somewhere in the ballpark of 45 days. The closest answer on our list here would be 50. And that makes sense because what we've done here is we've been able to calculate that 50 is the closest to 45. If we plug that into our answers here, we can see, oops, we can see does that make sense? So we can say to ourselves, sorry, I should say 50. We can say to ourselves, all right, if I were to do 15 miles divided by 0.3 miles, that would take 50 days. And yes, it does make sense. So we're gonna write that she ran for 50 days. All right, now that we're in the practice, they're gonna go a little bit quicker. So let's take a look at our second problem. Here we have Bob has 132 meters of rope. He cuts the rope into pieces that are 1.2 meters. How many pieces does he have? So here you can see that we've laid out the equation, 132, the total amount of rope, divided by 1.2, which is the size of each piece of rope, and we're trying to determine how many pieces he has in all. Now remember, sometimes it's helpful to rewrite this as multiplication, so I'm gonna rewrite it as blank times 1.2 equals 132. Now we need to do what we've done in the past, which is, here's the big thing. Remember, when we divide decimals, we think of the numbers as whole numbers, and then we reason to determine the size of the answer. So I'm gonna ignore the decimal point in my problem here, and I'm gonna say, all right, well, what's 132 divided by just 12? Because that's a problem I can solve and that I can use to help me get my answer. Well, that's one of my math facts, and I know that the answer is 11. So now I need to think about my choices. Well, it could be 1.1, it could be 11, it could be 110, it could be 1,100. Um, and so I could go on and on. But I need to think to myself, is my answer going to be smaller or larger than this 11 here? Well, when I think about it, I know that I could do a little bit of estimation. I'm going to think about this problem in a different way. I'm going to think about it like this. 132 divided by, well, 1.2 is very close to the whole number 1. And so if I do a little estimation, I know that 132 divided by 1 is 132, of course. So my answer should be somewhere close to 132. My closest out of all of my choices is 110. And it makes sense that my answer is larger than 11 because I'm not cutting the rope into 12 meter pieces, I'm cutting it into just smaller 1.2 meter pieces. So I'm going to need more pieces to create the entire length of 132 meters of rope. So in the end here, we know that Bob has 110 pieces. All right, problem number three. This is our final one for today. A jelly bean weighs 0 0.07 or 7 hundredths ounces. Libby has 42 ounces of jelly beans. How many jelly beans does she have? So here's our equation. We're taking a total amount, 42 ounces, and we're dividing that by the size of, or the weight of each jelly bean, which is 7 hundredths. We're trying to figure out how many beans does she have in all. So let's turn it into multiplication. That might help us. And if we do that, we're going to have blank times 0 0.07 equals 42. Now, in this problem, 
just like we've done in the past, what we need to do is we need to consider the numbers as whole numbers and then reason to determine the correct size of our answer. So let's think of it like this. Instead of 42 divided by 7 hundredths, let's think about it as 42 divided by 7, which is 6. So I could think of my choices. I could say 0 0.6, 6, 60, 600, 6,000, etc. Now, is my answer going to be smaller or larger than 6? Well, if each jelly bean weighed 7 ounces, then there'd be 6 of them. But I know that each jelly bean weighs a lot less than 7 ounces. It weighs less than 1 ounce. So I'm going to probably need a lot more than 6 jelly beans, a much larger number, to create the same amount of total weight of jelly beans. So I know my answer is going to be greater than 6. So actually, if I want to, I could even eliminate these two and think about the other options that I have available. So in this case, one way that I can think about my answer is I can think about using a, um, a hundredths grid. And what I've done here is I've taken this hundredths grid and I've broken it into tenths. And I could say to myself, the reason I'm doing this is because I know that this number here, this, um, this seven hundredths, I know that if I were to do some rounding, seven hundredths is pretty close to one tenth, right? It fills up just about this whole bar. So if I were to think about, okay, well, if I have approximately here, if I have 42 and I'm dividing that by 0.1 or one tenth, and I'm trying to get some answer, that's the same thing as taking, um, 0.1, multiplying it by something and getting 42. So how many groups of 1 tenth does it take to get 42? Well, if I just had one whole, that would be 10 groups of 1 tenth. Now, I need 42 wholes. So if I take 42 wholes and I multiply that by 10, now I'm at 420, okay? The way I just got that was I was thinking how many groups of one-tenth, how many of these bars would it take to fill up 42 holes? We started with 10 here. We would need another group of 10 to fill two holes, another group of 10 to fill three holes. So 10 times 42 is 420. Which of my answers is closest to 420? Yep, you're right. 600 is the closest. So I would fill in here 600, 600. And I can check to see, does it make sense? Yes, it does make sense because I'm taking um, a number 42, I'm dividing it by a very small number, just 700, and I'm going to get a large amount of jelly beans. So she has 600 jelly beans. Wow, that is a lot of jelly beans. So in summary, when you're dividing whole numbers by decimals, it might seem tricky at first, but if you use estimation, visual models such as hundredths grids and number lines, and you reason through your answers, you're going to learn it in no time. Thanks for watching How to Divide Whole Numbers by Decimals.